Oh, this is where Murky wants me to like go out with him to a place for, for something and then it all amounts to nothing. Rough as Dutch, safe to touch, smooth as bone, leave it alone. I still don't know what that means. Why did you come here? I don't need you. Nobody here needs you. We're not friends with her anymore anyway. No longer friends with whom? Grace. Why? She's killing herself. Grace is. She doesn't care. Killing herself? She talks to the dead for real. Touches them with her head. But it kills the living. I'm telling her that's not how it's done, but she won't listen. Touches them with her head? What? Yes, touches them with her head. And that's killing her? Yes. Clara says Grace will die completely if she does it three more times. But you know a different way, huh? There is another way. I can show you. Come on. Just walk with smaller steps. Uh... I mean, should I do it anyway? Even though it's not going to do anything? I kind of want to do it anyway. <laughs> Uh, wait a second, I want to check on Grace first. Must you tread the earth with your feet? Why did you come? You aren't allowed to be here now. Is it true you can talk to the dead? No, I didn't... Grace, that's what they call you, right? Look at me. Alright, fine. It's true. The dead need to be spoken with. Otherwise, they're in too much pain. Do they answer? Sometimes. When they do, I feel pain too. Can you... Let me talk to my father? It hurts me. Clara said I only have enough strength for three or four more conversations. After that, I may die. So before, I completely refused to use her ability, but now I think I want to try to use it a little bit. Three or four? Okay, we'll have to strategize about how best to use your ability then. I need rest. Can you come back later, please? I don't feel so well right now. So I think I did this, but then I just never came back later, I think was the issue. So, yeah, I'll just, I'll just come back later. Of course, goodbye. I won't waste a girl's life to touch his ghost. Wait a minute. Is there no coming back later, even though we just said come back later? Ah, whatever. I mean, when was my last save from Saba's place? Yeah, I don't want to redo all that trading and stuff. I don't have enough hands. So sad without my caring poke. You're carrying poke, huh? You said you'd show me how to talk to the dead? Yes, I know a different way. Let's go then. Just go, just go slow. I've got short legs and I can't run. I'll carry you on my back. Hop on. <laughs> so I think they're mistaking the sound of herbs for the sound of the earth talking. Pit-a-pat. Oh, pit-a-pat. Three coffin bears, two mice, and a bat. Here? Here, I guess. Here. It's beautiful here. Shh. Listen to Swevery grow. Swevery? We need Swevery. And Twire. A blade of each kind. It's pretty. Will these ones do the trick? Yes, these are the right blades. Magic enough. So what do we do now? Go ahead then. Talk to him. How? I thought you wanted to teach me. What am I supposed to teach? You just need to want it really hard. Close your eyes tight too. It'll happen. So it's all just daydreaming? I did not lie. I did not. I don't need you. 
Nah, -uh, at all. Ah, it's my own fault for taking a kid too seriously. What is there about you to love? I don't want to. Nah, uh. I'm not imposing myself on you. You took me out here. I hear them all over the place, but I don't really see them. Where are we, by the way? Oh, just next to that thing. Okay. Let's head to the Broken Heart and see if we can sell some herbs and buy some food. Actually, before I go to the Broken Heart, let's go here just because I think when I realize it's locked up, I then get a quest to go speak with Big Vlad, I think. Oh, what are you doing here? And I think there's somebody over there who like gives me some money to talk with Big Vlad, and I never did that, so I gave him the money back later. Mm, what plan is next to follow? Which I start with. Would say the townsfolk. Yes, I already know about that. Mm, thank you. Yes, just telling me to talk with people to learn more about what to do for the day. Yeah, these are the ones that want me to speak to Big Falad about opening up the termitary again. Have some coin. We've collected it. There's a lot. Tell them to let us into the warren. We're scared. Termitary? It's foul, cramped, suffocating, too high, too concrete. But safe. It's not safe. Right, I suppose people jumping from its windows just wanted to let some air in. Why oh, speak of it? Evil is coming, Yargachin. You know it too. Inside lives Taya, overseer Taichik's daughter. She can protect us from any evil. No harm will befall the place where Mother Superior lives. I wish that were true. What evil? Tell them to let us in. Fat Vlad will listen to you. Take the money. Just tell him yourself. All right. Give it to me. I'll try. It's really not very much money at all, is it? I think it's like maybe two, three hundred coin. Okay. Now let's head over to the Broken Heart and get some food. Oh, young Vlad's here. Every little makes a mickle. Your face seems vaguely familiar, but I'm positive we've never met before. What is your business? I'm the son of Isidore Pura. My name is Artemy. You have my condolences and my envy. Envy? Why? You were lucky to have a father like him. Indeed. Isidore respected you as a person. He indulged your desire to walk your own path, and has never forced you to follow in his footsteps. He never tried to produce a carbon copy of himself. That bit about my own path? I'm afraid it's not so simple. When he sent you away, the kin were livid. They condemned Isidore for tearing you away from your roots. But he always said that this was the only way for you to come to truly love your people. Through choice, not blind necessity. I see great love and wisdom in that. I get the feeling you're venting about your life, not discussing mine. Right you are. Familial obligation is a sore spot for me. I'd pay good money to never have to think about it again. To me, it's a very important principle. With a father like yours, I don't see how you could say otherwise. Your father is the most influential person in the town. If we disregard the kinds and Sabarovs, one could say my father controls this town as closely as he controls his fat, fat purse. 
Sadly, he's content with the current state of affairs and sees no reason for things to change. His complacency will doom us all. Things are already in motion. But let us speak of something else. You're right, though. The current power balance should be challenged. I'm saying this as a son of the kin. By the way, have you heard about Sabra of looking for volunteer patrolmen? Please tell me it's not to send a new raiding party after you. I'll sigh with relief knowing that the man merely wants to instill martial law in our godforsaken village. I like knowing what my competitors think. Heh, <laughs> funny indeed. Gimski's heir spends his days in a pub called the Broken Heart. Okay. Roundwire. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah, I got a bunch of that. Hmm. I'm thinking maybe I should just sell it all. Hey, hey, how much is food, by the way? Like, how much has the price increased? Uh... I'm not totally sure. I only remember the price of fresh meat. That was like 420 or 450 or some 400 and something. I'm not sure about these. Either way, it doesn't look like the prices, if they've gone up, it doesn't look like they, they've gone up a huge amount. Yeah, I don't have any need of brown twire right now, and my money is going to go a lot further this early on for food. So yeah, I'm actually going to sell all of this. Holy shit, that's so much money. I could even sell some of my other herbs. Like, I already have a lot of blood twire. Should I just sell it? No. No, no. Um, let's get more coffee. That's always a good thing. I'll eat the smoked fish right now. And the milk. And let's get all these walnuts super cheap. Damn, I feel rich. Man, that really didn't do much for my hunger, did it? Uh. Also, these will stack. I don't know why they weren't stacked to begin with. They stack up to 20. Yeah, a lot more room in my inventory than I thought. Do I want to get Twirine? I mean, it's cheap right now, but like, honestly, Twirine doesn't seem that useful after the first day. It just highlights caches, and I know where a lot of them are. I don't need to find every single one. Let's go say hi to our old buddy, Reuben. Hey, all right, Lara's here. One sparrow is not enough to feed twelve mouths. So, here we are again. I managed to calm down Sta. He was wrong about you. Or, he was not entirely right, at least. What got into him? You should let him speak for himself. I want to talk to you first. He can wait. Were you already offered your father's inheritance, Cub? Refuse it, I beg you. Do not follow his path. Why would I refuse? I don't know if I can properly explain this. There's no happiness down this path, not for yourself or others. Your father's path was cruel, Cub. Explain yourself. All in all, this is a quiet town. Not perfect, but there's a place for everyone. We're all connected through bonds of love, of friendship, of patience. Life flows through those bonds. The town's veins, and to cut them would cause harm. Your father, don't be mad, he dreamed of remaking it all. What exactly did he want to change? Everything. Our town felt wrong to him. He used to say that broken bones set badly will cripple a man, leaving him unable to function as others do. To Isidore, our town was a vile... Melunion.
Perhaps he thought that for a reason. He was a healer, sure. He knew life as no one else could. The kin revered him. But even that did us more harm than good in the end. What do you mean? Five years ago, there was an outbreak in the crude sprawl. It spread like wildfire, dozens and dozens dead. People sent for Isidore. When he arrived, he, he ordered the whole quarter to be quarantined. No one could leave, not even the healthy people trapped inside. It was the right decision. The townsfolk obeyed his orders without question. They barricaded the whole neighborhood. In the end, there were almost no survivors. Almost no survivors? But the town lived on. I suppose that's true, but Cub, do not take his inheritance. Isidore's inheritance is his power, his authority, his duties. If you become another Isidore, we will never rest. We will never know peace. Yeah, if I don't take Father's inheritance, I really wonder what will happen. Will the game even continue? Like, I mean, I, I guess it would, but that means you wouldn't get Father's list, right? So you wouldn't really know the children are important in that. I feel like that would massively change things. Well, I've already taken it, but, uh, no rest for the wicked. You hey, aren't asshole. Cub anymore, Burach. Time to grow up. Why did you come? Finally thought of some good excuses? I'm waiting for your excuse, an apology, which I may not accept. The best form of defense is offense. You've always done it well. Stop. Are you out of your mind? Yesterday I was told you'd killed your father. Oh, of course I finally achieved my childhood dream. That's not far from the truth, Burrah. I'm two seconds away from breaking your jaw. You betrayed him. You left when he needed you most. He cried out for your help, but you didn't care. He was in peril, and you were too busy elsewhere. He believed, truly believed, that your arrival would put an end to his troubles. And, as always, he was right. Um, explain what peril? Hmm, you were in no hurry. I'm going to kind of skip some of this. Only got a single letter, two, maybe three weeks ago. Mm, you're unneeded here, don't bother with your father's inheritance, he has better heirs. Like you? And why not? I was his student. I preserved his knowledge while you wiped your ass with his letters. I was always by his side. Here's his letter, the only one I received. Look here, idiot, he mentions a threat. What could it be? No. What do you know, then? Some student. Shut up. Your father's inheritance is his work, Bura. That's his legacy. He sent me away. He wanted me to study elsewhere. I'm not going anywhere. You should listen to Gravel. You're acting stupid. This gives the best thing in the quest log. Reuben is an idiot. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. I was heading over to the old Gimski's place, and I just came across something that I missed before. This is the area where the herb bride was holding that skull, and this is the day after. The skull is on the ground, and there's a kid here that I can talk with. Their name is quote unquote Wench. Why aren't you running away? Aren't you scared? Boo. Well, of course I'm scared, but I'm a brave man. I have bone legs, see? I'm a clay wench. I cannot walk, but whoever sees me runs away in fear. You should run away, too. Isn't it boring just sitting here in one place? 
I'm not bored. Clay wenches don't get bored. How do you know so much about them? You're ruining it. Run away already. Ugh, I can't even stomp my foot. I'll bite you. <laughs> Just playing around is cute. Okay, okay. Ah! Oh, scary! Oh, hey! I have everything I need to get my knife up to the next level. Ooh, found a package. I saw the chestnuts, I didn't see anything else. I'm in this area here where those three bodies from the train station were, and I remember that there was a cache here, so I wanted to take a look. Wow, there's almost nothing in there. Here, have some peanuts. Coming over to Capella's place. Ah, right, they're burying the eighth. Hmm. I want to be like a super traditionalist, kinda, so I think I'm gonna avoid burying the eighth. Because it's taboo to dig a hole. Uh, hey, uncle, dig a hole for us, will you? What for? We need it. This is actually hard work. What would be my reward? A burial gift. Everyone gets to take something away from a funeral. That's why we're holding it. Wait, I don't remember getting anything last time I did this. Are you burying a cat? Yes, I mean, no, not a cat. Then whom? Just the eighth. Hmm? The eighth what? Well, the previous seven are already pushing the daisies, and nothing bad happened when we buried them, because the holes were shallow. Oh. Yeah, shallow holes. That's ah, fine. I guess shallow holes are allowed. Alright, I'll dig you a hole. that cutscene. Yeah, I don't know what burial gift they were talking about. Maybe not a physical object. This rock looks odd, doesn't it? Like this looks like a 
hoof or something. Okay, Capella. Ah, right, and Yulia's up there. Let's meet Yulia for the first time. When I secluded myself in silence, the world around me got louder. Uh, you are just a local ripper. <laughs> That's a bad introduction. <laughs> How can I help you? Uh, you have incredible eyes. Who are you? Hmm. Yeah, just telling me about how they design the town and the pathways and stuff. The town streets are your doing? Yes. Why the hell did you make the town so awkward to navigate, then? The kinds implied that the town already has something akin to a nervous system. They suggested I view it as a huge living creature. So my job was acupunctural. Basically just telling us about how the kinds make structures that try to stretch humans... Let's speak with Capella. A vagrant has bestowed her crude grace upon the Saburos. A vagrant? Oh, they're talking about Clara. Your Artemy Bura. Greetings. Greetings to you too. Are you Olgimsky's daughter? Yes, my name is Victoria, but friends call me Capella. Well, are we friends? Yes. Really? How'd you figure it out so fast? I can see. Haven't yet mastered the art, but I do see things sometimes. It's a gift I inherited from my dear mother. Ah, oh, yeah, talking about clairvoyance. Powerful gift, if you're telling the truth. Not as powerful as my mother. I'd like such a gift myself. Mother said it would pass. Better to lose it, then. Undo sarcasm. I'm sorry, it was the only option that seemed sort of nice. Astonish me. You likely aren't afraid of blood, right? Of course not, I'm a surgeon. Under your feet, the hard soil acts as though spring melt, each step forming an imprint filled with red. You leave pools of clotted blood in your wake, Artemy. Hmm. This time it's not going to happen, though. That's not how it's going to end. I think you've bound us. Why have you come? Are you looking for my brother, perhaps? Or do you want me to ask something of my father? Do people often come to you as an in-between for Big Vlad? Yes. Father pays heed to what I ask of him. Tells me I'm the only person he loves. That's because I take after Mother. My condolences. Oh. Our family's falling apart. Father and brother argue all the time, louder and crueler with each passing day. Brother is angry with me. Everything went awry after mother's death. Why is your brother angry with you? Brother acts against father's will. Your kin make up most of father's workforce, but he... He doesn't treat them well. So brother argues with him, but father hates to be challenged. He says you'll disinherit my brothers. Or my brother, rather, not plural. <laughs> Making you the heiress, right? Wrong. Mother never wanted that, and father honors her will. Still does. Another family torn apart. The sky is cloudy, yet earth awaits your casket, and filling your pockets is a whole lot of crickets. They say the strangest things. Did something happen? You look worried. Wanted to ask you something. Go ahead. He wrote this note. Here, take a look. Why are these names listed together? Yours is on here too. I don't know, but I have a suspicion. Why are you frowning? Is this something bad? Well, no. About a year ago, your father began to seek our company. We all met together, sometimes, or in twos or threes. It happened naturally. He taught us, I suppose. 
But not anything special. I think it was more about passing down something. Something of great importance. Hmm. Go ahead, I'll do my best. Um, he can see beneath crude earth petty lies and hard truths, Han used to say. Han didn't like him much, but even he got out of the polyhedron to talk to him. He believed we were the ones who would remake this town, rebuild and conduct it in the future. Conduct the town? Did you mean govern or what? No, a town is like music. You must play, writing the composition as you go, all while minding the harmony. Are you a musical person? Eh, unfortunately, I'm not. That's what he was preparing us for. Changing the town. I can see it now. He taught each of us something important. Perhaps, perhaps he gave a piece of himself to us. Yes, that must be what he did. Guess I'll have to protect you from all evils, then. Father believed that the children on his list are the key to the town's future. Guess I should keep an eye on them in the future. Alright, big Vlad time. Wait. What the hell? Why can't I talk with them? There used to be a mark on the map to talk with him. Now it's just gone? What? Okay, well, that's quite odd. Really don't get what happened here. Anyway, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I think I'm going to head up to the town hall and speak with Sabarov.